All right, to start this off, we got two different characters here. One is a single sprite character, and the other one is a character consisting of five different sprites. Let's start this off with the single character sprite. We're going to need a few variables to get us started. One is a reference to our sprite render here. The next is a public bool called take damage. And then the last few here are public int, whoa, public int for max lives of the player has, private one for current lives of the player, and just two more variables. <laughs> one that determines how many times the player's sprite is going to flicker, so we'll have a public int flicker amount and a public float flicker duration, which will be the time between the player sprite flickering back and forth, like in the trigger clip earlier. So let's explain what the these variables, each of these variables are going to do. The public sprite render here is going to help is going to allow us to take reference to the sprite's color, which is what we'll be affecting today. The take dam the let's see can take damage or no we'll leave it as take damage. This will determine if the player can take damage. Max lives is the maximum lives we set. Current lives is the one we're going to edit where the player takes damage. Flicker amount is the amount of times the player's sprite is going to flicker from opaque to not opaque during the flicker um, damage flicker. And this float will determine the breaks it takes between each time the player is opaque and not opaque. So with that, let's get started on the first couple of things. To start this off, we got to make this take damage bool equal to true. And without this, for some reason, setting it true uh, declaration didn't work, and putting the start function did work. And this will allow the damage flicker to actually occur and not be like me with two recordings ago where I just had to stop to fix my own code. Next one we're going to be doing is saying current lives equal to max lives. This way the player doesn't blow up when it exists. And then next, under this update function here, let's create our void take damage method. And I know creating a variable the same as your uh, functions isn't the best thing, but it's virtually this, you know, for the sake of this, let me, um, let's use some decent variable name. We'll call this can take damage. There you go. Oh, sweet. Now take damage, here is where the player will actually be losing health whenever it's hit by something. But in our case, it'll just be clicking the screen. First off, we're going to see if can take damage is equal, equal to true. So the player can actually take damage. And if it is true, current lives get subtracted by 1. And if you're doing this with a game where you have like multiple different damage values, you can have whatever damage value pass in as an argument when you first declare uh, take damage and just have current lives uh, subtract that value. So after we do that, we are actually going to call the next part of our tutorial, which is almost essentially the last part, which is a code routine. And we're going to call that damage flicker. And my spelling has been off since, our, since quarantine has started. So since this is a beginner tutorial and maybe you just got into Unity, a quick explanation of what code routines are. They're basically uh, functions that can be stopped at any point in time. So like whenever you uh, call something like take damage here, the entire like the entire bit of code inside of it will execute. Like the whole thing will run before you can move on to the next thing. But a code routine can be paused right in the middle. So it's like we could if this take damage um, function here was a code routine. We could just stop it right here and move on to another thing. And what makes this uh, super convenient for us is we can actually use a code routine to make a pretty simple timer, which we'll need for actually determining how long the player will be immune and how fast we want to flicker between sprite colors. So with that said, let's create our code routine here. You can do that by creating an I enumerator. 
I'm going to call that damage flicker. Oop. And you'll see we have an error even though we declared it right. And that's because a coroutine needs a little something extra for it to compile correctly, or even be run for that matter. To start us off, let's say can take damage is equal to false because the player shouldn't be able to take damage while they're flickering. And while that's happening, we want to run a for loop. So for int i is equal to zero, while i is less than flicker amount i plus plus. And this will allow this will um, this is where our flicker amount variable will come through. Because here is when the player's sprite will flicker back and forth between um, opaque and not opaque to display how long they're immune. And this we can change this flicker amount as much as we want to have the player flicker like a billion times before they can take damage again. But that'll take a really long time. So we're gonna set it to three. And here is where we're gonna use our sprite renderer too. So we're gonna call our sprite uh, renderer here and we're gonna reference its color. And because we're just changing the opacity, we don't really have to do much with the sprite's color. color. We just have to mess with the alpha of it, which is pretty much the opacity of RGB. In this case, RGBA. So we're gonna create a new color, and we're gonna set it to 100% on red, 100% on cream, 100% on blue, but 50% on the alpha. And this is where the magic happens. This is where the flicker, when the player turns in visible for a brief moment. And to ensure that this doesn't happen instantly, we're going to add in that little bit of extra that a coroutine needs to run. So we're going to say yield return new, wait for seconds. And this right here is just a super simple timer. You can call this whenever you want, and it will just run perfectly. Well, for this example, it won't. Other times when you use it, it might overlap on itself, and you have to add like a little extra bool to uh, make sure things don't get muddled, but right now, we just need the timer. And for argument, we're going to pass in our flicker uh, duration, or whatever I called it. Oh, yeah, the K is kind of important in the word flicker. Sweet, after we got that, all we have to do is set our sprite color back to white. Which when uh, which is the color that a sprite will be if you imported it from somewhere else and you have it, your own like bunch of colors. If you set it to something different, you need to just slap whatever color that is on top of the original sprite's color. So pretty much white is clear. And again, we will call yield return new wait for seconds. Call flicker duration in there. Finally, we will set can take damage equal to true. And that is pretty much our damage flicker. So let's head back over to Unity. First off, save it. All right, this was supposed to be a cut to Unity to show the end product, but I forgot a pretty crucial line of code. We need a way to for the player to actually take damage. So in order to do that, we're gonna put a if statement in our update here to check if the mouse button so input.get mouse button down zero, which is the left click. So whenever we left click, then we take damage. Save that, and let's go to Unity for real. Sweet, so now that we have our single sprite character working, let's work on our multiple sprite character. And it's essentially the same script with a couple of for each statements instead of just uh, editing one single sprite. So let's go over to our multiple sprite script here. Let's and from there, we're going to go back to our single sprite script and copy everything that is within this class. So highlight it all, control C, go back to our multiple sprite script, highlight all of this, and just control V. Again, this is just the same script we did before, but it, this time, instead of just a single sprite renderer, we are going to have an array of sprite renderers. We're going to call this sprites because now it's plural. Now down here, instead of just editing a single sprite's color, we're going to put a for each statement here. So for each sprite, whoop, for each sprite render, s and sprites. So we're just checking each sprite render inside of that new array we just created. We're going to put this sprite.color line of code inside that for each loop, 
change sprite to s because that's the variable we set in our for each loop and it just does the same thing we did in the other script except now it targets each and every single sprite component and switches its opacity we'll copy this right here we will paste it here and then instead of having the half opacity we'll set that back to color.white save it and that's all you need so if we head back into unity we'll see we now have an array of sprites and that's super easy to uh, place all the stuff we need in there we'll lock this in the inspector here go over to our multiple sprite character daryl over here click the first sprite shift click the last one drag and drop that over our sprites are right here and look at that it's already all put them in there it's already put them all in there set our max life to something stupid like everything oh that didn't do the auto thing it did last time uh set our flicker amount to three flicker duration to 0.1 click play and look at that it's a little weird because the torso is flashing before the arms does but i feel like with a little bit of tweaking like if we prioritize the arms before the torso we could get this back to something more homogeneous but overall this is all you really need i'll put this i'll put the script in the description i'll like have a little link to a google drive so you guys can check it out for yourselves but if you're following along you can just type it out i highly recommend that so you guys get used to uh, typing c sharp but yeah that does it for this tutorial i hope you guys learned something and enjoyed it and if you want to see me do some game dev live i'm at twitch.tv slash i don't know entertainment monday wednesday friday in the mostly in the evening so come by and check it out anyway i hope you guys learned something and have a great day peace